Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm here today to talk about my, oh my goodness, what month just finished? February <laughs> favorites. Now, every once in a while, I will have a month where I don't have a ton of random favorites. Like I don't have a ton of skincare favorites or hair care or like random food items that I sometimes stick in. And it's really just makeup and fragrance. And when that happens, I feel like the best way to show you is by actually applying the products. And that is what this month was. I felt like when I wasn't trying out new things for like review or a video, I really did concentrate on one look, maybe two looks, not much variation happened with the products that I picked. So that's the look that we are going to do today. And these are all not new products. I think they're, I think I've won the mascara is new and the lipsticks and that's about it. So let's jump in. I really should probably just correct my under eyes before I come on camera, unless I'm using a new product and I'm not. I'm using my Clinique Airbrush Concealer in the shade Light Honey to get rid of this darkness under my eyes. I just repurchased, and did I need to? No, because I still have a ton of correctors I need to get through, but I have really been missing my Fit Glow corrector and I have been out of it for a while now. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to order it. <laughs> and I did. And I can't wait for it to get here because it truly is one of the best. So like I said, there were a couple of variations and I had a, like four foundations that I really gravitated to the most this month. So I'm going to tell you a few of them before I use the one, one or two. Uh, the Air Perez Oat Milk Foundation. I talked about this in my Get Ready With Me full face of nothing new and just how much I forgot how much I love this foundation. And when I pulled it out, I used it day after day after day after day. It's so good. It doesn't even look like I barely used any because you don't need much. Check out that video or check out my full face of Air Perez that I did where I talk about this foundation in both because it's just beautiful. A very nice light to medium coverage, looks like skin, Works with pretty much everything I use with it. Love it. Now, the rest of the month was a Lancome month for me. And that's not surprising considering Lancome makes some of my very favorite foundations. The one that I'm not going to use today that has probably been the most reoccurring foundation in all of my favorites videos is the Lancome Taunt Eat All Stick Foundation. I love this thing so much. I can't get over how much I love it. Every time I use it, I'm like, why? Why do I even use anything else? Well, I know why I use anything else because I love so much other, so many other things too, but this one just absolutely never fails me. It is a little bit more, more matte than the liquid foundations, but it's still not matte. And I did a kind of roundup of all the Lancome Taunt Eat All foundations if you want to see this in action. And honestly, you could probably just put this in the search bar of my videos and multiple videos will come up because I've used it and talked about it so many times. I have two different colors in this and I think 330 Bisque Neutral is still my favorite. It's a little bit darker than the 260 Bisque Neutral that I also have, but they both work. So definitely like this is all I have left of it. Not gonna last me long at all. It's just good. Now the one that I'm going to use today is actually two and because I love both of these, I was like, you know what? I wonder if I just mix them. I love them mixed as well. So the Lancome Taunt Eat All Ultra Wear, the original foundation, and the Taunt Eat All Ultra Wear Care and Glow. So I have been mixing these two and I've been loving them. So usually for my face and neck, these are pretty small pumps. So I use about three pumps. I'll take about one and a half pumps of each. And I am in different colors in these. I don't know why. I think because when I went to purchase the Karen Glow, they didn't have my normal 260 Bisque Neutral. So I got 310 Neutral and it works fine too. So mixing those two together. And again, I could just wax poetic about Lancome foundations in general. I feel like they have like kind of spurts on social media where they'll get a lot of attention, specifically when a new one comes out. And then you kind of don't hear about them anymore. But I just feel like the love needs to be kept alive because <laughs> they're just so good. They're not overly matte. They are some of the longest lasting foundations I have in my collection. If I ever 
ever have some kind of event or day where I know I'm going to have to have my foundation on for a very long time. I'm talking like 12 to 14 hours. One of these three is is most definitely going to be high on the list of what I choose from because I never have to question their longevity. They're not going to break down. I can use them when my skin is dry. I can use them when my skin is more normal in the summer when I may be sweating more because, you know, you walk outside in Tennessee in the summer and you sweat just from walking to your car. The humidity is humid, <laughs> shall I say. So really, I probably could have done with just two pumps because I didn't did not use all of that. I feel like it differs day to day. But see, it's just it's just pretty. Like it just lays so well. And I don't know why I mix them together. Probably because I love mixing foundations in general. And I liked it so much, even though I had no question that I knew I would, that I just continued to mix them quite a few times during this month. I will skip over concealer because, I mean, it's Chantikai. I will say though, Hopefully by the time this video has gone up, I will have posted a comment that I got on my stories in Instagram. Someone posted on one of my YouTube videos where I was talking so wonderfully about this Chantikai Future Skin Gel Foundation as my concealer, saying that she rarely ever comments. She's, she watches a lot, but she's not wanting to comment much, but that she purchased this and it is by far the very best concealer she has ever used under her eyes. No creasing, no cracking, no dryness, nothing. And I have gotten that from so many of y'all and I just want to say thank you when you tell me the things that I recommend to y'all work. It really does matter to me. I like to know that stuff doesn't just work for me, that it works for other people. And that's why I do these videos on this channel. That's why I have this channel, to share my love of products that work so well that I just can't keep quiet about them with people who actually care about makeup so that they in turn can find products that work just as well. So I'm gonna use that for my concealer and set it and then we will continue. Quite honestly, sometimes think that the products that I talk about can become very boring for y'all because some of them are so incredibly redundant and I just can't help it because while I love to buy new things and try new things, Sometimes there are products that come along that just stick. They just stick. And there are ones that I just don't wanna not have in my collection. They are ones that I can't help myself from reaching for time and time again. And this powder is one of them. The Air Perez Corn Translucent Powder. I just can't, I can't stop. This is their old packaging, okay? So they have new packaging now, which I absolutely love because it is refillable where you can only buy the pans to refill it. I love that option because the pans are always cheaper than the initial purchase of buying the compact and the pan. So this is the old packaging, but as far as I know, it's the same product. And it's now available at Ulta. Air Perez was has been available at Ulta for a while, but only select products. And when I was searching their new arrival section, as I do quite often, I noticed that the new packaging for this powder is now available there. So that's great. I feel like it's gonna be easier for everybody to get. People can use their points. It's just so good. Why do I like this? Because it mattifies enough. I do not like a super, super, super dewy, sweaty look. It's just, I think it looks so good on so many people, but it does not flatter me. It just doesn't suit me as well as I feel like something that's a little more in the middle. So when I first used this, it looks pretty matte, like it did mattify those foundations pretty well. However, once I spray at the end of my makeup and as I go throughout the day, it does such a good job of setting the makeup and keeping it in place and keeping it long lasting without looking like I have a ton of powder on my face. And it's not too luminous, it's not too matte, it's right there in the middle. It's just perfect. I feel like it's like Goldilocks and the Three Bearers. It's just that in a powder for me. I've gone through probably, I don't know, four or five compacts. I have two in my backup drawer and I look forward to being able to purchase the new packaging once I go through all of them because I do think it's a great idea. Now for bronzer, not new, but I'm telling you, oh, how I love this bronzer. And I wish I didn't because it is the most expensive bronzer that I have in my collection. And there are so many times where I look at luxury products and I feel like, okay, Luxury, 
It's sometimes fun to buy. It's fun to have for the packaging. More often than not, the product within that packaging isn't that much different than something you can get at a mid price range or even drugstore. Now there are some that that is not the case. That there are some products that you get what you pay for, like the Chantecaille Future Skin Gel Foundation, pretty much everything from Chantecaille in my opinion, and this bronzer. And this is from Sicily and it is the Fido Touche Sun Glow Bronzing Gel Powder. It is not that pretty anymore because I have used it so much. It did have this like sunburst pattern on it, which is really pretty, but I just <laughs> cannot stop using this. It is a baked gelée formula, so it's a little bit harder to get out of the pan. And I think honestly, that's one of the reasons I love it so much because I would really be hard pressed to go overboard with this bronzer. It's just not possible with the formula. And someone like me needs that. If I go in with a very powdery, very pigmented bronzer, I am most definitely going to overdo it. This one, I do not. It's the perfect shade. It being that baked gelée, it has a little bit of a sheen to it, but it's not shimmery. But it's, it's, that sheen just helps it from looking too flat matte on the skin, which in turn, to me, makes it look more skin-like as much as a bronzer can look skin like. That is definitely something that while I know the price tag is exorbitant, now I got it on sale. I do think that it's good to check out sales at like, I think maybe I got it at Bergdorf's for like 30% off. Definitely worth getting on sale, but I can't say that once I'm done with it, I'm not gonna pay, pay full price if I can't wait for a sale because to me, it's that good. Now for blush, I didn't really, stray too far away from this blush this month. If I did, it was still in the same color range as this, which if you know me, you'll understand why. But this is the Blushing Blush Powder Blush. Is that really the name of this? Blushing Blush Powder Blush <laughs> from Clinique in the shade Sunset Glow. So it comes with a brush that I promptly discarded, but this is the shade. This is very similar to the shade of my day today. It is very similar to my favorite shade of makeup, period. It is a little bit, it's got a little bit more pink in it than a straight peach, but it still has that also peachy undertone. So it's not straight pink. It's not a cool tone pink. It's definitely a warmer peachy pink. And see how pretty it is? It's not <clears throat> matte, but it doesn't have shimmer in it. It just has more of like a satin finish, which is very flattering on the skin, especially as I get older. Now I'm gonna buff because I'm using a cream highlight. And so whenever I'm done with all my powder products, that's when I go in and buff if I have a cream highlight already on and I forgot to buff, then I'll just have to be very careful not to touch the cream because it will adhere to the brush and kind of mess things up. And then the cream highlight I talked about in my showing love to makeup I already own video and it's the Ara Perez Vanilla Highlighter in Falling Star. I had used it for probably a week or so before I filmed that video and ever since I filmed the video and that week I have used it every day since. This feels like I haven't even put a dent in it. It looks like I haven't even put a dent in it, but I have used this at least 16 or 17 times this month, not including the times that I've used it before. This is never going to be finished. Even if I used it every day, I feel like it wouldn't be finished, but it is everything I love about a cream highlight because it's easy to apply and so forgiving on the skin and not too much just gives that really pretty sheen to the cheekbones that I look for, especially nowadays, in a highlight. Now there are some days where I'm like, give me the powder, give me the high shine, but more than not, I reach for my cream highlights that just give this really nice sheen to the cheeks. And then I will just spray to kind of set everything down, take away any powder powderiness that might be there. And usually it's between my Chantecaille Rosewater, my Jane Ardell Pomest, or this one, which is the Jane Ardell Balance, which is geared more towards oily skin, but it still works. It's cooling. And again, it just kind of sets everything in 
takes the powderiness away, fuses everything to the skin, everything I like about a hydration spray. Now let's get on to eyes. I'm not, why do I even say it? Why do I even say super simple? Maybe if there's somebody new watching, the eyes are gonna be super simple. And what I have done this month is basically go between two crease colors and the same lid color, stick a powder eyeliner on and I'm good to go. The two crease colors, one I'm not gonna use today is the MAC Give Me Sun. Yes, this is a bronzer, not an eyeshadow, but it is one of my favorite, favorite crease colors for eyeshadow. It is, there's something about it. This color is very, very suited to my skin tone. It is a warm shade. I will often just put this in the crease, put some mascara on and be good to go. And I always feel very confident about my eyeshadow when I have this on because the color is so suited. Today, and a lot of the days, I have been using the blush that I used, which is something I always do even if it's not this blush if it's some other kind of blush i will very very often take that blush and use it as my eyeshadow either all over the eye as a like one wash of color up into my crease or just in the crease like i'm doing today and it's a, it's just my kind of color i just love these eye colors for eyeshadow they make my blue eyes pop again for my skin tone, they seem more flattering than some other shades. And I already have the product out. I don't need to reach for anything else. Very often I will use whatever highlight that I chose to use that day, but because I used cream, I don't, I don't use creams that much without putting some kind of powder on top when they are this consistency, because this is a little bit more tacky. It does dry down more powder-like, but still. I have been reaching for a separate lid color, and that is the Chantecaille Luminescent Eyeshade in Cheetah, which is just this beautiful champagne gold color, and it goes with pretty much any crease color that I use. It looks good with the Give Me Sun. It looks good with this blush. I've just been applying that. I like to do it like the first layer with a brush, and then I'll go back in with my pinky and kind of press it on just to up the pigment a little bit, make it a little bit more noticeable. But if you like a more subtle shadow, then you could definitely just use the brush and do that first layer. And then I have been pulling this out. They don't make this anymore and I really wish they did, but this could be any shadow. It could be if you're using a palette, whatever dark eyeshadow is in it. But this is something that I've had for a while and I'm so glad I do because I reach for it all the time when I'm using single shadows or a quint that doesn't have like, or a quad that doesn't have a dark shadow in it. And this is the Marc Jacobs Omega Shadow in O Snap. And it's just a very dark cocoa brown. But again, this could be any black or brown or any shade. It doesn't matter that you want. And just my Refer 29, the best makeup brush on the face of the earth to do an eyeliner. And then taking that blush for underneath the eye to round out the look. And I'm gonna do mascara off camera, but it is the only new product that I have this month. And I already talked about it in my full face of Jones Row Beauty review. And it is their mascara that I love. It's probably my favorite product out of all of the ones that I tried in that video. So I'm going to use that off camera and we'll be back to finish off with lips and fragrance. All right, let's talk about lips. I have a couple of favorite lips that I went to more than not this month. All of these were sent to me. The first couple that I'm gonna talk about are the new plumping lip balms from Lawless. So I got sent all of the shades. I'm gonna insert a picture of all of the swatches that I put up on Instagram. But I have, they're all very pretty. They all look way darker in the bullet than they do applied, which is pretty par for the course with balms. But my two favorite are Baby Doll and Lover. And I used Baby Doll in the Instagram reel that I did. It's a very Baby Doll cool tone pink. And then Lover looks really dark in the bullet. Like no way would, would I like that. But I actually really do and I love, so even though I just showed you the swatches, these are Baby Doll and Lover. So see how Lover is not near as dark in the on the swatch as it is in the bullet, but I love them mixed together. I've been layering them a lot, and I like these because they're not overly plumping. They're not uncomfortable. I'm not someone who really gravitates towards those kind of lip products, 
and they are a balm, so they're moisturizing enough where I don't feel like I have to apply a gloss on top because I am a gloss person, but I can apply a gloss on top. So I really like that. I like the colors that they came out with. I gave my 14 year old the, I think it's, is it pink marshmallow? I don't know. It's basically a clear balm and she loves it too. The one I'm going to use today, it was sent over to me from Lottie London. And this is the Supercharge Gloss Oil Tint. And it comes in this little tube and this is in the shade Drenched. And it is just a very pretty oil in like a very nude pink color. And that, even though it's not near as nude as, it coming, as it's coming across on camera, I'm going to put a little bit of this Lover on top of it just to give it a little bit more definition, but I honestly wear it by itself and I love it. So that is the full face of all of my makeup favorites. I'm going to quickly, because I feel like I've been talking a lot in this video, talk about my perfume favorites. Twisted Lily sent over the brand new release from Amouage. They actually have four new releases, fragrances in their Odyssey collection. I think it's their Odyssey collection. And this is Guidance, which look, can we just see a theme? Look at these colors. Wait till you see the bottle. This has been getting this beautiful packaging. Kind of mixed reviews. I feel like you either love it or you don't. I feel like you definitely pick up different things depending on your nose. Look at this bottle. Oh my goodness. I mean, this is like probably out of all of my bottles, out of all of my bottles, this screams me. This is like me in a bottle because of the color, because of the simplicity. I love the tan top. It's magnetic. It's just beautiful. This is a fruity floral. It's actually what I'm wearing today. There are mixed reviews. Some people say this does not smell very good. Some people absolutely love it. I was a little apprehensive and I'm going to be quite honest. When I first sprayed it for the first, like, I don't know, 30 seconds, I was like, yeah, nope. I don't think I like this. And because even though ambergris is on the base notes in the description, that is all I smell for the first 30 seconds, which is a very like marine kind of salty scent to my nose. But then like right now it's gone. It goes away very fast. I can still tell that it's there, but it is not dominant and it's not too much to my nose. And that's when the other notes start to come in. So it's got pear, it's got hazelnut, saffron, vanilla, sandalwood. And I really get, I, I do get the pear and the hazelnut. I think that's what makes it more of like a fruity scent. It has rose and jasmine, which I don't smell hardly any of the rose. And I really don't get a lot of jasmine. My nose doesn't anyways. The more it dries down, the more I get that vanilla with a, a hint of sweet, creamy sandalwood, but it's just, it's pretty. It is a very springtime appropriate scent. I'm wearing this today. I can find myself, or I can see myself wearing it a ton in the upcoming spring months. It's not, to me, as overpowering as a lot of Amouage fragrances can be. Some of them, it's like two sprays and that's all you need. To me, that's not it. Like I can spray more than that. It's still not overpowering, but it's absolutely beautiful. The bottle is, like I said, probably my favorite in my collection. I really do suggest getting your nose on this in the form of a sample, or if you are able to smell it somewhere in store, it's beautiful. I have a 10% off code with Twisted Lily that I'll put down in the description box to where you can you know, get a little bit off if you wanna get some samples, or if you are feeling really adventurous, maybe blind by it, but I don't really suggest blind buying any amouages because it is a different niche house, which I love. Um, I feel like that's what makes it niche, but it's a love or hate. I personally really do like that one. Now I'm gonna talk about two more. <laughs> promise, I promise this video is gonna end. This is another house that I have fallen in love with over the past probably six months. I got a, a lot of samples of this that I purchased direct from the Pierre Guillaume website. That's the house. Pierre Guillaume, Paris. And I ended up with these two full bottles, which I absolutely love. Now, one of them was sent to me from Lucky Scent. I now have a discount code with Lucky Scent. It is Mandy10 and it gets you 10% off. And the other one I purchased. So the one I purchased is Dialogue with Venus. I love this white bottle. This is one that I had sampled a long time ago. 
and knew that I wanted it. It is a very creamy lactonic, meaning kind of like a milky smoothness to it, scent in my opinion. It has some peach in it. It has ylang ylang. It's got sea notes. To me, this is the perfect spring summer tropical type creamy fragrance for those who don't like coconut because there is no coconut in this. But it still has that kind of beachy, summery, sweet vibe to it. And when I sprayed this sample on and then I got in the car, Chad was like, oh, what is that? That smells so good. And so I was like, yeah, that's just more justification to purchase the full bottle. So I did and I love it. It smells so good. And then Lucky Scent sent over Tonka Bodycon, which is the newest addition to the line. And I had a sample of this as well. So I knew that I was going to love it. And I do. This is for those of you that like sweet boozy scents. Oh my goodness, it is just to die for. If you know boozy scents are my favorite. It's like my favorite accord. I love it so much. It's got tonka bean and rum and vanilla and honey, pistachio, amber. It has an, a green apple note, which I can kind of get. It gives it a little bit of tartness. It's not gourmand sweet in my opinion. It is smooth sweet. Definitely get the rum. I definitely get the tonka. Those are the two prominent scents, but it is it's very smooth. I could see this Chad too. It is very unisex in my opinion, but I don't know that I could give it up because I love it so much. Mm. Just if you, rum is one of my very favorite notes in perfume. And if you like a boozy, smooth fragrance, definitely get your nose on this one. So those are my no questions asked, top three cents for this month. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. I feel like it's gonna be way longer than normal, but I just felt like chatting. And I will have everything listed and linked down in the description box. Be sure and like and subscribe before you leave so you don't miss out on any future videos. And I hope you all go out and have a very blessed day.